Hello everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to set up your uh, dental unit and uh, the correct ergonomics for right-handed individuals. For the same video in Arabic, kindly check the link below. Once you enter the Sim Lab or the Phantom Lab, you're going to receive your instruments and then head to your unit and make sure that you are sitting in the unit with your name on it. Then you're going to wash your hands and you can sanitize your hands. Then you will wear your PPE starting with your gown. Then you will wear the surgical mask. Then you will wear the protective eye goggles or face shield. Last but not least, you are going to wear your gloves. After that, you're going to make sure your instrument tray is complete. After that, you're going to move the dummy head and prepare your position. After that, you're going to install the hand pieces and the high volume suction and three-way syringe. After that, you're going to install the upper and lower jaws in the phantom head. When sitting in position, you have to make sure that your feet are flat on the floor at the right angle with your leg and your legs are on a right angle with your thighs. You sit completely back on the seat to rest your back. Make sure that your back is straight with your shoulders back. Let's start with the ergonomics of the occlusal surfaces of quadrant three. When working on mandibular teeth, you're gonna place the patient or the sim head at a 45 degree angle, making sure that the occlusal plane is at 45 degree at the same level of your elbow. And for right-handed students, you're going to tilt the patient head a little bit to the right. When working in lower quadrants, you're going to go either in a right rear position, right position, or frontal position. Then we're going to adjust the light. We're going to start moving the light from the patient chest, moving to the oral cavity. This is how we're going to position the light when working on quadrant three. And this is how we're gonna position it when working on quadrant four. After placing the burr, make sure that it is stable and make sure that the handpiece is secure. Then make sure that the water is turned on in the foot control. Make sure that your neck is at a reading distance from the occlusive plane. When working on quadrant three, you're gonna make sure that you have finger support at any heart tissue, so either the tooth or alveolar bone. When you're working, you have to make sure that you can see the tip of the burr, okay, in the grooves, okay? So you cannot work blindly. When you want to work on the seven, you're just going to extend your fingers to the posterior a little bit, also making sure they have proper finger support, okay? If you cannot see the grooves clearly, then you have to tilt the patient's head a little bit until you can see properly without tilting your head. 
when working on the premolars also you're just gonna bring your fingers a little bit forward and also the same rules apply you have to make sure you have proper finger support and then with the mirror regardless of the tooth number you're just gonna use it to reflect the light so can you see better or you can retract the cheek to recap you're gonna place the hand piece perpendicular to the occlusal surface you're gonna cut place proper finger support uh, use the mirror to reflect the light or retract the cheek. Moving on to the ergonomics when working on the buccal surfaces of quadrant 3. When working on the buccal surfaces of quadrant 3, you're going to tilt the dummy head a little bit more. Okay, and then you're going to place the burr perpendicular to the surface you're going to prepare you're going to place finger support in the alveolar bone okay you make sure that you're perpendicular to the surface following the contour of the tooth making sure you can see clearly moving to the occlusal surfaces of quadrant four to work on the occlusal surfaces of quadrant four, it is a similar position to quadrant three. You're just gonna uh, place the handpiece perpendicular to the surface. You're gonna prepare, and then you have to place proper finger support, making sure that you can see clearly. If you can't, you're gonna tilt the dummy head a little bit until you can see clearly. You're gonna use the mirror to retract the cheek or reflect the light. If you're gonna work on the second molar, you're just gonna extend your fingers a little bit so you can reach, making sure that the bird is perpendicular to the surface. The same thing if you're going to work on the premolar, making sure that you still have finger support. Moving to the buccal surfaces of quadrant four. When working on the buccal surfaces of quadrant four, you're going to tilt the dummy head a little bit until you can see directly. Okay, you're going to retract the cheek, make sure that the bird is perpendicular to the surface. Moving on to the labial surfaces of the anterior mandibular teeth. So for working on the lower labial surfaces of the mandibular teeth, you're going to place the patient on a supine position and you're going to sit behind the patient or the dummy head. You're going to retract the lip with the mirror. You're going to place the hand piece perpendicular to the surface you're going to cut and you have to place proper finger support. For working on the labial surfaces of the upper anterior teeth, to work on maxillary teeth, you're gonna place the patient or the dummy head on in a supine position. Okay, make sure that the level of the patient's head is uh, by the level of your elbow. Okay, then you're gonna readjust the light so you can see properly when working on the upper teeth. When working on maxillary teeth, you're going to sit behind the dummy head and you're going to place proper finger support on the alveolar bone or teeth and then you're going to place the burr perpendicular to the labial surfaces you're going to cut and you're going to retract the lip. For working on the palatal surfaces of the maxillary anterior teeth, when working on the palatal surfaces of the anterior teeth, you're going to use finger support we're going to keep the patient position supine and then we're going to use indirect vision. So we're going to place the burr perpendicular to the surface, use the mirror to see. We can push it a little bit back so it doesn't get really soaked. When working on the occlusal surfaces of quadrant one, uh, you're going to sit also behind the patient, retract the cheek, place proper finger support, and then you're going to place the mirror in an angle where you're going to look indirectly through the mirror. Make sure that the burr is perpendicular to the surface and that you can see clearly from the mirror. Moving on to the buccal surfaces of the maxillary teeth of quadrant one. To work on the buccal surfaces of quadrant one on the maxillary teeth, you're going to tilt the dummy head position a little bit to the left and then you're gonna retract the soft tissue, place proper finger support on the teeth, and then you're gonna place the burr perpendicular to the surface and you're gonna start working with direct vision. Moving on to quadrant two, when working on the occlusal surfaces of the maxillary teeth. 
similarly you're going to be behind the dummy head you're going to place finger support on the right side and then you're going to extend the hand piece to the left side in quadrant two you're going to place the bird perpendicular to the surface you're going to place the mirror in an angle until you can see the occlusal surfaces clearly. Moving on to the buccal surfaces of quadrant two on the maxillary teeth. To work on the buccal surfaces of quadrant two, okay, we're going to tilt the patient head to the right side. We're going to retract the cheek. Place finger support on the interior teeth and place the hand piece perpendicular to the buccal surfaces and you're gonna start working with direct vision. In this video, we saw the proper dentist and patient position for right-handed individuals, and uh, we saw in details the position in each quadrant. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.